Hey, welcome to Variety Tech today. Uh, we're still on our journey looking back at 3D cameras and camcorders from over the years. We're still on our journey to find uh, the worst one. Today let's take a look at the Sony Bloggy 3D. So I'm going to say it right up front, this is not the worst one. In fact, it's not, I wouldn't even call it among the worst, it's actually pretty good. This is a good 3D camera. Now the Bloggy series itself is from a pretty obsolete period in camera history. This was after camcorders were already common and affordable, but they were now being viewed as bulky. But it was before smartphones had really taken over the world. They had already existed, um, but not everyone had one. And those that did, didn't always have the best camera quality. So for this brief window of time, there was a market for these compact camera camcorder combos. Some of them were shaped like bricks and with buttons and a screen on the back. And uh, some of them, like the Bloggy series, were shaped like this. A small screen on the back. And usually they would have one lens, but they made a 3D model, the Bloggy 3D. It has a mini HDMI port to plug into your 3D TV or projector. And to transfer the files, it doesn't have a SD card slot or memory stick, seeing as it's Sony. But it has a finite amount of built-in storage, um, about an hour and 25 minutes of footage. And then you take that, flip this little switch right here, and now it pops the USB. I'll do that again in case you missed it. Flick. And that plugs into your computer. Or this also functions as a hard drive. So uh, depending on your, uh, your Blu-ray player or TV, you can plug this in and it may recognize it and you may be able to access the files that way and play them in 3D. I could on my LG Blu-ray player. I just plug this straight into it. And if you're worried about weakening the uh, USB port because uh, it would be holding its own weight on the port, you should have a USB extension cord, male to female, and then plug it in that way. So anyway, the pros and cons besides the, the lack of storage is also um, the battery. I mean, it has decent battery. It'll probably last a day of moderate usage, but you can also uh, plug it into a battery pack on the go. It also has a L little LED fill light on there for uh, darker scenes. Of course, that won't work from a distance well, but um, for close-up things. It does have a tripod screw. It's on the side, oddly, so if you can turn uh, your tripod sideways, it can hold it. Otherwise, it'll be like this, and that won't do. The buttons are very nicely designed. It has the on-off switch. Uh, and then to the right of that is a big uh, st still photo shutter button. And then on the back, you'll see the directional pad for navigating the menus. But all this, also the center select button is also the video record button. And seeing as it's not a touch screen, there are three multi-use buttons, depending on what menus you're using, to select various options. It also has the option to set a timer so you can uh, click the shutter button set it down where you want and then have it take a picture 10 seconds or so later it's a 4 by 3 ratio screen so uh, the widescreen footage will be letterboxed black bars on the top and bottom uh, on the screen obviously not in the final video and it is glasses free 3d um, it's not high resolution like the fuji w3 but it is good enough to get a good idea of what you're filming in 3D, which is nice. And it has a nice narrow interaxial, as you can see. In some ways, I would compare this to the Red Hydrogen one uh, due to the narrow interaxial. Um, but it's not quite as narrow as that, it's a little bit wider. It also films at 1080p at 30 frames a second. However, this is half width resolution. So between the Red and the Sony, which is better? I honestly can't say. Um, that, again, there's pros and cons. Neither of them have image stabilization, so you got to have a steady hand or a mount of some sort. The Red Hydrogen One records at full width 1080p, dual full width. However, 
it also has a little bit softer resolution and not as much uh, stability you know it has that focusing issue and speaking of the focusing issue of the red hydrogen one I just want to mention um, in a previous video I had said that I couldn't tell that a focus fix had been implemented in latest updates and um, one of the guys from Leia reached out on the video and he commented that it had been fixed um, if you want to lock focus on a video you have to touch the screen and he said that'll lock it so that being said if you're regardless even though that uh, focus locking ability is now available when you're recording that being said under typical dynamic changeable video recording conditions it's still going to have that awkward squinting effect that you and you don't get that on the Sony that this has a great focus that doesn't jump jump all over the place in and out it also has more of a just a more stability of it and even though it's less resolution um, half the resolution you can see uh, some jaggies on the edge of uh, details but it still has a more of a stability that seems more grounded not as soft as the red hydrogen one even though it's twice the resolution and you can get these um, pretty affordably uh, a lot of times um, by them used well obviously that's the only way <laughs> and the same goes for red hydrogen one so um, so I guess really the deciding factor would be the convenience if you want to have a phone with the 3d camera always with you which is personally myself it's come in handy numerous times, then the red hydrogen one is the obvious choice. If you prefer other newer phones, lighter phones, and still want to have a nice, affordable, compact 3D camera, uh, then the Bloggy is a great choice. You get similar quality of video. You won't get as good pictures, because pictures is where the red hydrogen one shines. Um, the Bloggy takes 2K stills um, the red hydrogen one takes 4k stills and they really look beautiful um, I used some of those stills um, in my film New Hampshire seasons as well as real bugs 3d they have besides the ultra HD it's really good colors and focus and background blur it, it they look great um, but this can be decent stills too just uh, make sure it's good lighting but yeah, the, the video is very good for the price. Um, if I had to choose between this and the other mid-range camcorders I reviewed, like um, the Toshiba Z100 and the DXG, um, I reviewed those some weeks ago. Um, even though this is smaller, I still think it comes out better. It looks better. And maybe you don't want to spend 500 for mid-range, like the GSTD1 or the HDR TD10 from Sony, the mid-range camcorders, or the pro ones, like uh, the GYHMZ1. All depends on your needs and budgets. So I'll leave you with this, some stills and test footage from the Bloggy 3D. See you next time. outdoors. Let's see how it turns out at arm's length. Is the 3D too powerful? I don't know. We'll see.